Well, this is a bill, and the bill is to be debated in Parliament when the time for the debate on the bill comes. And of course, the issues we will put to defend and try and persuade the opposition uh, to support the bill are things that we will say in Parliament. You see, Mr. Clinton told you yesterday he still didn't know whether he was going to vote in favour or against this bill uh, because these things are still to be debated. Well, that's exactly why I'm surprised to see that the opposition have wanted to challenge the reasoning behind the bill before they've heard the argument from the government. So it shouldn't be a cause for concern? It's not worrying that the government's proposing to change the definition of net debt? Of course not, and this is not something that we are certifying as urgent, something that needs to be done in a particular period of time because there's a problem with debt. This is something which is designed to, first of all, give effect to the manifesto commitment of the government to have a net debt of 300 million by the end of the lifetime of this parliament. That is the option that 68% of the electorate decided they wished to see pursued in Gibraltar in the next uh, four years. That's what we are doing in one limb of what this bill will do. And the other is removing one particular criteria for the calculation of the ceiling of debt, which is not something that concerns us today, but something that concerns us structurally, namely that the recurrent revenue can actually actually overnight, well overnight in, the, in a financial year, turn Gibraltar's debt into a debt that exceeds the legal borrowing limit just because one particular commodity perhaps might not have sold so well in a particular year and our income may be down. We think it's wrong to have Gibraltar on a knife edge on those issues. It's not something which is relevant at the moment, but should it be relevant in the future, we wouldn't want any other future government to be in a position where they find that the debt exceeds the legal limit because of that variable that is introduced by that limb. So it's fixed now, or it would be should the bill be passed uh, on the economy uh, strictly uh, without reference to recurrent revenue, income. Is this at all a cause for concern? There should be absolutely no cause for concern whatsoever. The net debt is on target to meet the uh, criteria we set out in our manifesto. Net debt will be 314 million at the end of the financial year when we go and publish the estimates and go and have the debate on the budget in Parliament. Uh, the link will not just be with GDP, it will also be with recurrent revenue, but in relation to the servicing of the debt. So there remains a link with recurrent revenue so that the servicing of the debt is linked to the amount that we have in recurrent revenue. Look, you have to spend, you have to cut your cloth according to what you can afford. And so you cannot borrow more than you would be able to service the interest on based on your recurrent revenue. What we can't have is the ceiling fluctuating depending on revenue because in the future that might affect a future government. It could be a GSLP Liberal government, a GSD government if there were ever to be a GSD government in the future, or the government of any political colour, not able to know where its debt limit is going to be because of those vagrancies of revenue. Whilst if you have the link to GDP and you still link yourself to revenue for the servicing of the debt, then that is something much more manageable. It's something much more in keeping with international criteria that other countries apply and is exactly what we think should be the case here. You said the 80% revenue ratio uh, exposes government to unexpected fluctuations in income. And in your recent opening address of Parliament, you mentioned a fourth quarter spike in expenditure. Could you explain what you mean by that? The, the fourth quarter issue is the spike in expenditure, where you find that uh, many departments or companies, agencies, authorities of the government have had voted a budget to them. They're not going to come in on that budget. They're going to come in well below that budget. They've spent less than they thought that they needed to spend. And there is this urban myth that you need to spend the amount that Parliament has voted you are able to spend, because if you don't, you might suffer a reduction ne next year in the budget that you're allocated. And we want people in the departments, companies, agencies and authorities to understand that that is not the case. We don't want them to spend for the sake of spending in the fourth quarter. We want them to spend what they need, exactly what it is that they need to spend to provide the service that the uh, public expects from those uh, particular departments, agencies, authorities, etc. Uh, but we don't want them to spend for the sake of spending. But that relates to expenditure, not to income. And has government already experienced an unexpected fluctuation in income? Not at all, but I can tell you that what I detect is that some wish that we had been, uh, and I'm not talking to people within these shores, I'm talking to people beyond our shores, and they might think that in trying to affect our income in some way, our recurrent income in some way, they might be able to affect the edifice of Gibraltar generally economically. We are making sure that that is not the case, that we continue to solidify the foundations of Gibraltar economically as well as in every other 
of the sphere and this is designed for that purpose and to benefit every single government of Gibraltar from here on in. It's not something which relates to any issue or problem today. Everything is going according to plan and on target.